test pilot to see how technology has made the skies a safer place. Look, no hands. This is the daftest thing I've done in an airplane for years. Here we go, full back stick. Oh, likey. For the last 100 years, aircraft manufacturers on both sides of the Atlantic have been developing technology to prevent air disasters like these. Fatal crashes that can be put down to three major causes. Adverse weather conditions, pilot error, and aircraft failure. Aviation disasters thankfully are few and far between. But when they do occur, they're analyzed and the lessons learned from them are put straight back into everyday flying usage. And one of the big improvements over the years, which has prevented hundreds of crashes, has been the use of automation. There was no automation when they built this Tiger Moth, just the essentials you need to keep you in the air. The thrust from the prop pulls the wing through the air, generating lift, and up you go. There's something elemental in being airborne with the wind in the wires, the wind in your hair, and knowing that you are the master of your own destiny. In a modern aircraft, it's called fly-by-wire navigation, and indeed the flight controls, there's no physical a connection between the pilot and the control. But in this aircraft, fly-by-wire means just that. There's dirty great cables going from the flying controls to my limbs, to my hands, to my feet. Say I move the rudder pedal to the left, you can see that the rudder moves to the left and the rudder moves to the right and the aeroplane behaves and yours in that manner. The elevators on the tailplane point the plane up or down, and the ailerons on the back of the wings control bank angle. If I move the rudder and ailerons together, whoa! Off we go! These are the vital controls in their most basic form that keep you in the air. Lose any one of them, and believe me, it's not good news. Even with the advanced aircraft we fly today, 20% of crashes are caused by mechanical failure. And on a modern passenger jet, if the plane starts to come apart in mid-air, it's likely to be fatal. Every pilot's worst nightmare is losing control of his aircraft. And by losing control, I'm not talking about having an engine failure. I'm talking about the actual physical control surfaces of rudder and aileron and elevator, up, down, left and right, physically being unable to function. This disaster in Sioux City, Iowa, was exactly that nightmare. They'd lost every control surface on the wings and tail when an engine fan blade severed all the hydraulic control lines. The pilots had nothing but the two remaining engines to bring the plane down. It's a miracle that 184 people survived this catastrophe. But NASA, yes, the Americans who brought us the moon landings, have come up with a computerized way of regaining control of a plane that's lost all its tail controls. So to test it, I'm about to experience a mid-air disaster with the system's inventor, Don Bryant. Bruce, I think you're going to enjoy this. I'm going to get a crash scenario not a million miles from what happened in Sioux City. Captain, we've lost all the control services on the tails. You have no rudder, no elevators, and no stabilizer. Right elevator, right elevator, the rudder's failed. I've got... Oh, no control whatsoever over the airplane. OK, let's see what happens. I'm trying every control on the main wings and whatever I can do with the engines. Full power, and I'm trying to get these elevators wagging to get a bit of lift out of this wing. 
Okay, let's see what happens if we do that. Not a sausage. Nothing I'm doing is keeping us out of a nosedive. My only chance of survival now is Don's intelligent flight system. Oh, ah, okay, give it to me. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Hey, you have the controller. Do you have flight control with the, th with the stick? Yeah. Artificially intelligent systems okay. respond to my commands, and I have control. Can I have one of these for Christmas? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Put the aircraft the attitude that you want and take your hand off the stick, just to prove it. It's just flying like it's a normal airplane. That's what it's supposed to do. Look at the flight controls. I've got my hands off the flight controls. Look at these things. They're, they're working like Billy over there. The red stuff is the tail of the airplane. Nothing is working. The neural network figures out which control surfaces are still functioning. In this case, the slats, flaps, spoilers, and ailerons on the wings, and uses them to replace the missing controls on the tail. This must take phenomenal computing power. This is incredible. Flap. This is unbelievable that there is no tail on this airplane. We would be dead. We would be a smoking hole in the ground if it wasn't for this system. I'll tell you what, there's, there's airplanes which have crashed recently, um, where if this system had been fitted to the airplane, hundreds of people would still be walking away and would be alive. Uh, flaps? Uh, yeah, full flap. And, uh... But there's another category of crash that Don's system is not designed to deal with. 28% of all air disasters are caused, at least in part, by the weather. Crashes like this BEA Vanguard, which came down trying to land in fog at London's Heathrow, killing all 36 on board. <laughs> 